bit unusual, but we would like to start with an apology. Because we know that the topic we are about to bring will be quite disgusting for half of the room, <laughs> but the other half will love it. Earthworms, and particularly compost worms. We do love them, and we want to share with you today some of the amazing things we have learned from them. For the ones who don't feel so comfortable, don't worry, we have some info that will help. Compost worms have a mission on Earth. They eat dead organic matter like rotten fruits, leftovers of vegetable, and even feces, and transform it into compost, but not any regular compost, but the most beautiful soil possible. And maybe you take it for granted, but imagine the world without this process. There would be huge amounts of organic waste and you could barely walk, actually. And the cool thing is that they can eat this organic waste basically anywhere. Of course, in the forest or in your garden, but also in your living room. All they need is a box, a warm box, with enough air, water and food, and they'll be happy. They eat vegan, so they will love your kitchen scraps. Also, they do enjoy coffee time, and they eat the newspaper every Sunday. So this is what any vermicomposting guide will tell you about worms. But what can we learn from worms? Over the last eight years, we are supporting people who are composting with worms. And we recognized a pattern. A worm box is like a Trojan horse. It enters your home looking inoffensive, and you think you found the perfect solution for your organic waste. Which is also true, but the worms have a more ambitious plan for you. They have the power to make people care. So deeply that they become compost addicts. But how do you recognize a compost addict? There is one next to me. When Marion eats an apple, she prefers to carry the apple core for two kilometers home to our place to feed it to our worms <laughs> than to throw it in the waste bin. And this is how you start learning from the worms. Learning, yes, because worms are excellent teachers. But as they don't speak, they don't have eyes, not even a nose, no ears, not, no backbone, you might wonder, how can they teach anything at all? And here is the magic. To listen to the worms lesson, you first need to learn another way of learning. And if you slow down, if you observe them with humility and curiosity, the worms will tell you a story. It is a story they repeat again and again since the beginning of time, and it goes like this. In nature, there is no waste. In nature, there is no waste. Your waste, it is food for the worms. Their waste, it is food for the plants. The plants are food for you. And the cycle just goes on and on. This is circular economy. Of course, we all know that ecosystems rely on cycles. We all heard at school about the water cycle and the nutrient cycle, the oxygen cycle. But we think that it is a very different thing to theoretically know and to be a part of. So when you have worms at home, you include yourself again in a cycle of reciprocity with nature. I give and they give back. And now you even know how it feels. It feels right. It feels so right. So, in nature, there is no waste. And there are a few more examples how having worms at home can have an impact on your life. For example, about the health. We got a lot of feedback that a lot of people say they are healthier since they have worms at home. But how does this work? So, it's going to be quite obvious if you take a look at these two pictures. The one on the left side, you have a lot of waste for worms. And most probably, people had a healthy meal. The one on the right, not so healthy, and zero organic waste. So when people have worms at home, 
they tend to eat less industrial food because a frozen pizza just does not provide any waste for the little friends. And so people start cooking more. And as they do so, they pay more attention to the food they buy. Like my mom, for instance, she started to buy bio food because she was concerned that the pesticides in the fruit pills <laughs> could be unhealthy for her worms. <laughs> Why didn't she think it could be unhealthy for her as well? That I still don't understand. But the worms made her change. So there is less waste and you live a more sustainable life. That's pretty awesome. And now when you harvest the final product of these little soil ninjas, the compost is precious. Yeah? And it also has a crazy impact on plant growth and occasionally also on people. There's my friend Birgit. She bought a worm box a few years ago because she wanted to start gardening on her flat. And she has a really small balcony, but look. This is her balcony now. <laughs> it transformed into a jungle. <laughs> and Birgit became a nationwide speaker on how to grow plants on small balconies. <laughs> and the best thing is, there is now even a family of squirrels living on her balcony in the middle of Berlin. <laughs> But how does this work? It's simply because nature rewards cooperation. The worms couldn't compost alone. They are working together with millions of fungi and bacteria, and also with Birgit. <laughs> and this happens with a huge community uh, of worm lovers. And in nature, nature rewards cooperation. And there is no waste, there's only diversity and fertility. So there is one thing you could remember from this talk. It is that worms have so much more to give us than just compost. They can also show us how to live in reciprocity with nature. If you want to know how, it's very simple. You adopt your own worms and you give them your waste and let them become your teachers. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>